This time on Stay Tuned, our Benz is back. Take a second to go over to the Stay Tuned merch store. We've got a rack of shirts from the original Stay Tuned shirt, Angelo's Gym. We're going to lose the shop and my new Firebird shirt. Check it out, and there's lots of stickers too. Hey, welcome back to Stay Tuned. I'm Tony Angelo. This is my YouTube channel. Uh, we have Michael Russo's 2JZ powered SL Mercedes 500 from 1992 up on the dyno here at PSR. And we're trying to figure out why, when we took it out after putting in a six speed through DZ transmission, it just wouldn't run right. Uh, this is a car that we built on Hot Rod Garage on Motor Trend, the show I used to host on TV. And Russo picked it up, sort of secondhand, and just wanted it to finally work. It had an automatic setup in it. It never really worked right. We blamed it on the Auto Trans. We like manuals here, especially for like a grand touring kick-ass car like this. So we put in a 3DZ, uh, six-speed, the CD009. We put in a Tilton seven and a quarter inch twin plate clutch so this thing goes like a light switch and then took it out on the road and it just would not pull like it should. It was breaking up, it was uh, spitting out oil, being problematic. Toyota motors are known to run forever and be pretty bulletproof so hopefully we didn't hurt it and we're just digging in now so let's figure this out. I'm gonna go to 100. Does that feel right? Yeah, so you just need to set it to, you know, reset it the way it is. Reset the the but that doesn't make me feel like that would have hurt anything. This car has a 2JZ GTE VVTi engine. It would have come in like an Aristo in Japan. That's a, like a GS300 Lexus here. And it is got variable valve timing. We took it bone stock, left the long box this way it was. We put on a CX Racing big single turbo, uh, an intake manifold, an intercooler, full exhaust, and it made 575 horsepower on an engine dyno with an AEM controlling everything and my buddy Henry Shelley, who's at AEM on the keys. And it worked right, but when we took it out the other day to get it going, it just did not want to pull. So we've got it here at Brad's. We're at PSR, um, Brad's shop, and he's gonna look through it and see if we can figure out what it is. We're gonna run on the dyno and hopefully turn this thing into a tire-killing German luxury, Japanese-powered, American clutch having ripper. Straight up. Ripper. These were brand new plugs, so that's a really good thing because they won't have been changed um, by the way we used to be running. It's just basically just been on the car for the last 10 minute drive we took over here. And I'll look at it, see if there's any marks from detonation, see if they look super foul from too much gas, any of those things, it'll give us an idea. Old school racers, all they do to tune their cars at this track, especially drag race guys, pull out plugs, look at them even under like a microscope, really see what they're doing, and then you know how the engine is working inside the cylinder. Doesn't look like it has any fuel. This one's not got any gas. No, doesn't look like it's got I run on that one. So one thing you can tell is if the car's, if this cylinder is getting no gas and this one's getting no it gas. Looks like it just came out of the box. Out the box. <laughs> I don't love that we've sprung this giant oil leak though. That's gonna hurt us as far as getting it back together. Uh, this is what they call waste spark. So sometimes uh, manufacturers will have one coil run two cylinders and they, they do spark at exactly the same time. It does sort of twice the work because you don't want the ones that fire together. You want the ones that are doing nothing. It's like going to, you know what I mean? Yep. It's going to fire for both of them. You find another cylinder in the row that doesn't have anything to do that. If you send a spark through at that point, it doesn't hurt anything. Waste the spark. And then you fire it again when that one's at the top and waste this one over here. I don't know if we got a ground issue or these injectors are clogged as hell. Hit them with some gum out. This one's actually fire. That's what fire looks like right there. Firing, 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 firing. Just along for the ride, these guys. Just, just, just here for the party. And it wasn't a particularly interesting 
ride out. No, it was exciting, but not yeah. for the, any good reason. Yeah, it felt slow. It felt like it's making like, I don't know, half as much power as it should have been. I'm not even gonna give it three quarters. <laughs> I'm not giving it that. So now we're gonna check with just like a pressure gauge what kind of compression it's making. At 130-ish, 120, oh, 130. Hold on, do it with the, the throttle, throttle open. Pull the throttle wide open. Let's see, he knows. Yep. All right. Got it. 135. As long as they're all the same, I'll be happy because I don't think it's spinning very fast either. All right. Same, same. We like same. All right. Every cylinder checked out to have the same compression ish between 125 and 135 psi. So that's not the end of the world. Uh, it's going to keep us looking for other problems. It's not a smoking gun. The fact that the front two cylinders seem to not be firing. They're not sharing the same coil, which makes us think it's not a coil. Um, so we're going to go to the injectors now and see if they're all clogged up. Things sit, they get clogged up. That's the last one in the rail that gets fuel. Might be the first one that gets all the trash. We'll see what's up. Here, hold that straight up. I want to tap them on our Yeah. Nothing came out of it. Looks like a little bit from Looks like here. a deck of 80 to me. A little bit. It's a deck of something. That didn't show up as... That seems bad. Yeah, oh, hold on. It might be low on fluid. This is some science. So essentially, this is like a little fuel rail. It's going to feed these two injectors. He's got plugs on the outside ones, two at a time. And it's giving these things, feeding them fuel pressure, and then this is going to open them. They're just big magnets. You just energize them. When cars are controlling the injectors, they give them a pulse width. That means like how often per second they're opening them. Bang, 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 and sort of letting them go. So these, do these pulse it or do they just let it rip? It pulses it. I can change it to idle, mid-speed test, all kinds of stuff. Pulse width adjustment. Yeah. Love it. I'm on a high-speed test right now, so it just is like a constant pulse. For this, but. Spray pattern. Look at them go. <laughs> that one's a little that one's a little crooked, but oh, that one? Yeah. Nah, the other one. Like now we're gonna see. We're gonna the way that they're sitting. I'm gonna set up the, I wanted to get the blood through and then we'll see what they flow over thirty seconds. Let's do in science at PSR. They're equal. We call my oh close. Yeah. That's nothing for a little bit of off. I've taken like brand new Bosch 210s and put them in, flown them at five seconds, and they've been off like 10 cc's from each other easily. That's okay, nothing. that's nothing. Is that all it takes? What do you mean? Like to clean them. No, I'm just running them through to make sure they're all mashed pretty close. Those are dialed, those boys. Got our clean injectors, dropping them back into the rail and the manifold here. And see what we're looking at. Down and dirty. Nice. Russo put in a fresh set of his own plugs. Sevens, baby. Thanks to Brad. Lucky number seven. What's happening here? <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> I'll work this camera. I like your lighting. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. Boom. <laughs> Big camera guy. Like vice. <laughs> I feel like I'm out in the woods. <laughs> Yeah. Blair Witch stuff going down here. All right, we have new plugs in there. Coils are put back together. Injectors are back in. They've been cleaned. They're all wired up. We found some stuff we're going to need to add, like a, probably a fuel filter, intake air temp sensor. This is kind of like just getting it ready to rock and kick it out the door stuff. But now we want it to be a real car, so there's some work to be done. Um, but hopefully just fire it up, hear it. We know, I'm assuming from a bunch of crankcase pressure, that we blew the front seal of the crankshaft out and it's going to just spew oil everywhere. So I don't know, do you want to do like a real quick, uh, like a dyno run or like, how do you want to do this? It's got to get fixed before we can really drive it, but I'd like to hear if it's running on six cylinders and kind of get some hope back in our lives. Yeah, of course. yeah. please be fixed. Please be randomly fixed, even though you were randomly broken. Yep, go ahead. Go ahead. 
Stop. Turn the key on. I don't think so. That sound great. So we can start pulling these injectors and seeing if it sounds any different. Definitely. There's no heat to it. One, two. Still? Nothing. Let me get my noise level tested. All right. Said no heat in these two. He's checking the heat. Another thing you can do is if you have a like a pyrometer, like an infrared thermometer, you just check each header runner. And if they're all the same, you know each one is firing. We still have no fire in the front two. There's our problem. Yeah, we're getting no signal to these injectors. Uh -oh. We're getting no signal to the front two injectors. This is a Noid light. So you plug this in. I'll show you real quick. The one that's working. Keep it running if it goes down. It'll look like this. See that? That's the signal to fire. We're not getting that on the first two. No signal to fire. So I plug it into one and two. Nothing. No signal to fire. That's our problem right there. That and I blew the front seal out of the engine from crankcase pressure. Shut her down. So I don't love it. All right, so we checked and these wires are unbroken from the computer to the injector connector. So we know this computer is having problems. That's the smoking gun and we've got to send it back and get it fixed up and then we should be in business. So just knowing that it wasn't running right with it running badly and just tried to figure out what the problem was. Number one, pull all the plugs out and look and see what's happening inside each cylinder. And we saw that number one and number two were not firing. And since the other ones we saw were firing and they share coils with one and two, we knew that it wasn't the ignition coils and we had to keep on moving. So we pulled the injectors out and saw, is there a fuel issue? They were not wet. There was not any fuel getting to those plugs. We took them over to the machine, cleaned them all out. Everything looks solid put them back in, checked it again, fired it up, cranked it, still only running on four out of six cylinders, put the Noid light in to see if the computer was giving it a signal to fire, no signal. And then the final check was to make sure that the wires were coming unbroken from here to the computer. We actually just plugged in and checked for what they call continuity. That means the wire is unbroken, zero resistance between the connector on the computer and the connector on the injector. That was right. And that left us with one final solution the computer is broke, it's time to fix it. We'll send this thing off or order a new one, get it rocking, but we know we've got other problems now. One of them is probably my fault. Uh, the front crank seal is definitely spitting out oil like crazy. It may have ruined the timing belt, so we'll change both of those pieces. There's never been a blow-off valve on this car. We'll change that. Intake air temp is hooked up to literally nothing. We will fix that. The wastegate has no dump where it fell off. We will fix that, and then, once we get the new computer, plug it all in, clean up some wiring, and this thing should run like an absolute monster. Let's do it. Let's do it. Two weeks later. Right, so we are back at PSR. We took the Mercedes back to our shop and tore the whole front end of the engine apart, did a new front main seal timing belt, and added this tile blow-off valve. You see a little bit of extra bling under there and it makes the cool sounds. Uh, but the big thing is that I went and grabbed brand new AEM Infinity 506 from a local guy who had it laying around and we are going to put this in with the new tune and if all of our calculations are correct this thing should fire right up and run really well and then we're going to put a new tune on it start driving this thing around and then maybe at some point you come in here and clean up some of this organize a little bit of this wiring but or just put that cover back on and call it a day. There she goes. Big, big click right there. All right, you want to load it in, Brad? Yeah. And I brought Brad a sweet gift. This is our Stay Tuned original shirt. But we're getting all of our shirts now silkscreen properly and made in Pennsylvania. And you can see how sweet that thing looks. There's a link in the description. So, Angelo's Gym, the Stay Tuned OG, they're sharper. They're sick and they're made in PA, just like us. Oh, I brought you this.
Hey, thanks. You're a swell guy. That's right. Yeah, I'm learning. Looking good. <laughs> so Brad's going to take the old tune from the old computer, which he saved on this laptop, and jam all that into the new computer, and hopefully this thing fires right up. This is what I need, the security code. You need the security code. Damn me. Top secret stuff. Now, one thing we didn't do when we were rushing up to the dyno um, on HRG was put an intake air temp sensor on it, which is something that the computer uses to continually adjust the, the mixture based on the air density. That's what it needs a temperature for. Um, so we're going to put that in. We're just going to drill into the intake manifold while it's on the engine, which is a little bit hairy, but I'm going to use a bunch of grease on the tip of the drill bit to grab those little shards. And we're also going to put some positive pressure here and hopefully it blows everything out. So we got, we got double plan, double plan. Oh, Put in. This is a pipe tap, 3 8 NPT. That means national pipe thread. But most importantly, you see the gift line. Paper, yeah, so pipe thread refers to something that's a taper as it gets threaded in, it gets wider. That's how it makes us feel. A little bit of tape or pipe dope on the thread and it essentially just wedges itself in there. All right, ready to bump it. Maybe. Slow down. Yeah, it does. It does. That sounds like six, right? Yeah, that's Probably better. Has a temperature cut for the rev limiter. Oh yeah, when it's not warm. Yeah. Sounds smooth. It definitely does. It definitely does. Yeah. Because I rem I used to always let it warm up and then I would. You guys have to pull my own to this one. Yeah. Oh yeah, change. That one's working now. We did not burn this. Let's do it again. Oh, he said I thought there was nothing in it. Here's yep. They're all working. These two injectors were not firing previously, so when I take the connectors off and the engine drops down in RPM and sounds rough, we know they're working. When I reconnect them, it sounds happy again. You hear it, dude. He's got Take the shirt easy. on and all. Woo! I, I felt that one. <laughs> you ready? It's yeah, Wednesday. One of the, yeah. I think one of the reasons we didn't have any success last time is we didn't put any pizza in the episode. Yeah, yeah. it's a and curse. Big pizza. Yeah, it was a it's curse. a gift and a curse. You know? To everybody who no roasted us in the comments on this, we hear you. That sounds appropriate. Yeah. She ready to rip now. a little spicy mustard in here. Oh my god. I'll be fine. I don't know how that translates, but I like it. Yeah, what's uh, the it says plus. It says Go this way for plus. Stops. What'd she make? 360 wheel? Getting there. How much boost? How much boost? 14 now. Oh, we gotta go up from there. You gotta throw some ignition timing at that bad boy. 360 wheel, call that 425 at the also, motor. It's, it's getting there. It's also a little fat, but the 2Js like to be a little fat anyways. But me like too, same seven. with me. Yep, I, like, I like being a little fat. With how long this run is, huh? Yeah, I'm like, what's where all the power is. I mean, it. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Hey, what I tell you? 396 wheel horsepower. We're just getting oh, yeah. started. How much boost, Brad? 17. 17. Turn it up. So it was what? Three pounds per turn, roughly? It was 
14. I got it. I got a system. He knows. I just turn it. Give it two. I got a feel for it. You might not have enough ignition coil for that one. Well, it's also a really close spark gap. The gap? 422 at the tire. That's where I'm. That's where we want to be. Told you. I take just a little out of it. So. Yeah. Take a pa take half a turn up. You good? At that boost level, Tony, we probably should be at like seventeen thousand. Seventeen what? Seventeen thousandths on the gap. The gap? Yeah. yeah. Probably should be. What's up? It was. It did. It, it did like a little. A little break Stumble, and it was just blowing the spark out. Yeah. It probably puffed out the back when it did it. No, not much. Not noticeable. I could, I could hear it stumble on it. It was like in the middle of a pull and it went like just a little hiccup, probably at peak torque or something. You went fourth or fifth? I was in fourth. I'm not doing it in fifth. It's going to blow these tires apart. Uh, yeah. With the rear gear in this car, fifth is one to one. He's running it in fourth at 155 miles an hour because fifth and then sixth. This car is geared to go 255. It's, it, <laughs> I'm telling you. Once we got the new AM ECU in the car, it fired right up. It sounds killer. We threw it on the dyno and at low boost, eight pounds, it made, I think, 265 wheel horsepower. And we just started turning it up. Brad is tuning the fuel curve and the ignition curve a little bit, putting a little more timing, a little less fuel, making sure everything is safe. I have been working the boost controller, turning it up, up, up. We hit 320 wheel, 360 wheel, 396 wheel, and now 422 wheel horsepower at 19 pounds of boost. This thing is ripping. I cannot wait to drive it. Four eighteen point one, perfect. <laughs> I give her a little bump. That was one pound less. That's eighteen pounds. Wow. I say we call it there. Yeah, that's good. That thing sounds killer. You rev it all the way out there. Yeah, seventy five hundred. Seventy five hundred. Call it five hundred horsepower. That's gonna be good. This thing is a different beast now. Tops off, sun's out, all six cylinders are firing. This big old turbo and six speeds, let's go. I'm ready, let's see what this thing can do.
I don't want to murder our brand new set of Falcon FK 510s in 265 and they're really grippy and it's going to be tough to go out and maybe have some fun doing burnouts. So I've actually got an older set of FK 510s that are a little bit smaller on the original wheels we put on this thing. We're going to throw those on and go have some fun. I've been running Falcon tires for a long time. They've been super supportive of me and the channel, so I appreciate it. They're on the truck. They're on this thing. They work really good. Hey, we're here at our secret donut spot, and we're going to see what our 2JZ powered 350Z transmission SL500 can do when you lay your foot all the way down. All right, I'll see you guys in jail. So that's it for this episode of Stay Tuned. Russo's 2JZ SL500 is back better than ever. I'm really stoked we could get this together for him. I love this thing. It is a wild ride. I kind of am bummed I have to give the keys back, but stoked he's got this thing ready to rock. Don't forget to check us out on social media. You can find me, Tangelo96. The boys are all listed in the descriptions. And uh, please like and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.